This is the fourth and final time that I am starting <laughs> this video. First it was lighting, then it was microphone, then it was forgot to click the button. <sighs> Are you attracted to unavailable people? Are unavailable people an aphrodisiac for you? And if the answer is yes, but you're not alone. There is something incredibly exciting and intoxicating about people who just aren't quite available to date you in a way that makes sense for you. Either they're in a relationship or some form of an open relationship or dating around, not ready for commitment, or they're not emotionally available. They are there physically, but they don't open up emotionally. Uh, maybe they're hot and they're cold. They give you mixed signals. Whatever it is, it's exciting because there's a push and a pull. There's a level of ambiguity and uncertainty that is destabilizing. And for the most part, that shit is pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Um, and you're not alone. And there's probably a variety of reasons why you do what you do, why you date people that sort of want to date you. One of those reasons is that it's a defense mechanism. I'm just going to scroll to the, can I see the live video? Oh yeah, here it is. It's a defense mechanism. If you are, attracted to people that are emotionally available, that is safe for you. Because you don't have to open up to someone who's also not opening up to you. So when they're unavailable, you don't have to invest too much. Even though sometimes you might invest a lot, you might really want more clarity than they're able to give you. But part of you knows that you won't ever really get super hurt because they're not available. They're not going to open up to you, which will kind of force you to open up to them to a level in which you could get really hurt because they'll leave. And so if you're with somebody or you're dating somebody who never really gives you what you want or what you need, that is hard and disappointing, but you're never really gonna get super hurt. And that's tough because you, you might actually feel a lot of pain because you're wanting something that they can't give you. And then you sort of have to ask yourself, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Why am I pursuing somebody who really isn't showing up for me in a way that makes sense for me? Who isn't showing up for me in the way that I need or want? Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I sabotaging my dream of being in the kind of relationship that I really want? Why am I settling for getting less than I deserve? Maybe you don't think you deserve more and that's too bad. Yeah, if you're in a situation if you're dating somebody, if you're in a relationship with somebody who's not available and you want more, well, I also want more for you. And I think that you deserve more. Definitely. You know, the hard part about this is that you might ask for more and realize that the person isn't willing or available to give you more. In which case you have to make a really hard decision 
of staying in a situation that doesn't meet your needs and that isn't in service of your love life, your greater love purpose, um, or leave. And that's hard because sometimes that person is great in a lot of ways. I'm sure they're great. If you're dating them, they're probably great. I mean, some of you are dating people that aren't great and then uh, you might want to explore that. But for the most part, I'm guessing if you're dating somebody, you think they're great. Even if they're unavailable, you can be great and unavailable. I'm great. I've been unavailable for a good portion of my adult life because I was scared, scared of intimacy, scared of really opening up to somebody to, to a level in which they could really hurt me. So I've been there. And if you're there, if you're scared of being emotionally available or available to another person, which is why you're kind of dating someone who's also unavailable, it's okay. It's totally fine. Recognize that that's where you're at. And if you want to be different, if you want to be more open, and if you want to be in a relationship with someone who's available, then do that. Take steps towards getting that done, to, towards meeting those needs. But don't shit on yourself for not being there yet. Just recognize that that's where you're at. Recognize that you're dating someone who's not available and that you're probably doing that for a reason. And that if you keep dating people that are not available, either they're married or in relationships or totally closed off emotionally or hot and cold or uh, are always vague and ambiguous. If that is your pattern, you might want to take a, <laughs> a good long hard, uh, hard look at that. <laughs> a good and long hard look at that. What's going on there? Why are you doing that? And what can you do to make that? What can you do to change that? To better that situation? Here's what I want for you. I want you to date people who want to date you. I want you to be with people who want to be with you. I want you to have sex with people who want to have sex with you on a regular, consistent basis. I want people who act in a consistent way towards you. I want people who show up and who open up to you on a regular basis, not just when they want to have sex, not just once out of every two, three dates or weeks, consistently show up for you. And I want you to show up for those people consistently as well. That doesn't mean you can't have moods. That doesn't mean you can't question whether you're in the right situation or not, or, or question how you feel about somebody. But for the most part, people who are available and open and interested show it. They show it. And people who aren't available and aren't sure if they're interested act in very inconsistent and ambiguous ways. And that is extremely hard for you. It's really, really, really hard to be in that kind of situation. And ultimately, you deserve better than that. You deserve people who can show up for you on a regular, consistent basis with kindness and respect. I want kindness, respect, and consistency for you in your relationships, even in your early stage dating. Whatever phase of finding love or being in love you're in, I want respect, kindness, and consistency. And if you find yourself time and time again with people who aren't available and aren't open, explore that. Get curious about that. Why are you doing that? And here's another piece. A lot of people say, I only attract unavailable people. 
And some people will say, well, you attract what you are. And I'm not sure I actually believe that. What I do believe is that you are a sovereign being. And just because you attract unavailable people doesn't mean that you need to entertain them or date them or have sex with them. Now, I know some of you will say, well, I, don't, I didn't know that they were unavailable until after some time. And that's true. There is a portion of the population that will present as available. And then when they'll get, when they, when they've gotten what they wanted, they'll disconnect. And unfortunately I haven't really figured out how to like weed those people out 100%. But one thing you can do is slow down, slow way, 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 way down before you sleep with somebody. And I'm not shaming you if you want to sleep with them on the first date. Go ahead. It's totally fine. No problem. I've had first date sex more times than I can remember. And it's not an indicator of whether somebody is open and available or not. It's really not. But, and, slowing down can give you a leg up because you can be more critical and you can have more time with that person to figure out, are they available or not? Are they in a relationship and not telling me? Are they dating five other people? Are they showing up in an inconsistent way? You'll get more time to figure that out if you slow down. And here's a note on red flags. If people show up inconsistently, that doesn't mean that they're not open and available necessarily. Could mean that. Could also mean that they've got a lot going on or that their texting habits are incompatible with your texting habits or they're not meeting your expectations for what um, consistent and available behavior looks like. And before you scream red flag and you run, I want to invite you to get curious about that red flag, about that inconsistent behavior, about that like bit of friction that you experience and have a conversation about it with this person. Hey, I get the impression that uh, maybe you're not as interested as um, you, you have been. Or, hey, I get the impression that um, you text very inconsistently. Like sometimes you're really on and other times it takes days and days for you to reply. And I'm kind of curious what's, what's going on there. Because my tendency is to sort of cut when there's a red flag and I don't want to do that in this situation. I'd actually like more clarity. I'd also like some clarity around how you feel about me. Are you enjoying spending time with me? Is this something that you want to continue to do? And I'm guessing that some of you are scared of having these conversations because you're going to get the answer that you don't want. The answer is, yeah, I'm actually not that interested or invested in you. But here's the thing. Not asking doesn't make it go away. That's like uh, <laughs> not testing for coronavirus. Doesn't, doesn't make it go away still there, their feelings, their ambiguity, their inconsistency, their unavailability is still there. So get curious about it. Have conversations when something kind of like bothers you a little bit. And there are available open people out there. There are. Maybe there are fewer and far, uh, far between. Maybe. I don't know. Don't know where you live. I don't know how, uh, how, how many people that you're in regular contact with or how often you meet new people. I'm guessing not that often because it's kind of hard to meet new people anyways, especially as adults. But they're out there. They really are. There are people. And there are also people that are unavailable that want to be more available. But you can't just hope that they will someday become more available. I think you actually have to get curious and have difficult awkward, direct conversations 
around their desires to open up and to be available and to show up and to do stuff with you and to connect and to commit. Yeah, this video was not well thought out. And I'm just letting my train of thought go where it goes. Which is kind of like relationships. If you've watched this live, thanks. Thanks for showing up. And I'm happy to explore this concept with you in the comments. If you leave comments, I'm happy to engage with you on this. What does it mean to be available? Why do you show up unavailable? Why do you attract? Why do you explore relationships with people who don't open up? Thank you. Thanks for being here with me today. Have a beautiful week.